Well, hello, 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 and welcome back. Well, welcome to <laughs> season two of our clone army series. Oh, sweet God, my friends. Let me tell you, I am just so ever tickled and excited to be back in the clone army series. Honestly, when I just booted back up the save and seen our big glorious base, as well as all of our favorite characters, I, I had honestly put the biggest smile on my face, so I am excited. Let's get started. Now, in today's episode, we have one big goal that we would like to accomplish, and that is taking over the world. As you can see, of course, even though we've exterminated Void, we still have many threats left on the planet. Many of these factions really dislike us or hate us, but two of them, such as the Empire and the Pig Union, like us, I assume for destroying Void. Apparently, though, the Federation task force that was captured and absorbed by Void is still on the planet somehow. So, of course, our first priority is going to be to come up here to this desolate little icy place and kick the absolute shit out of them. But for this mission, I've decided that we should actually send our Omega Clone Squad, our newest Vat-grown clone soldiers, they could use the practice. I've also decided to give this clone squad a bit more individuality so they don't actually have the same name, they're going to have names that are loosely based on the phonetic alphabet. Yeah, it's not very original, but that's what I did. And of course I say loosely based because instead of like Bravo, it's Beta, instead of Hotel, it's Harris, yada yada yada, I, you get it. The hope is as well, given them this little bit of individuality will also boost morale and bring them closer as a team. But of course nothing brings you closer as brothers and sisters in arms as one big ass battle. And judging by the size of this last federation outpost it looks like this is indeed going to be a big ass battle. Even from our eye in the sky in the ship, we could see what little remnants of soldiers remain here. Shame we don't have any nuclear bombs. <laughs> or do we? Okay, so maybe we whipped up one teeny tiny nuclear bomb before we left with our remaining resources, but we want to go boots on the ground and have some fun with this one. The Federation began putting up a very futile fight by firing a few mortars at us and a few turret rounds, and of course this did nothing, even when they did manage to hit us. I must say that I almost felt bad for how pathetic and unorganized they were. Their troops were hardly coordinating any movements. They were just blindly running into our Omega Squad, getting mowed down by our blasters. It was hardly a fair fight at all. For them, of course. But really, is it ever a fair fight for them when the clone army is so powerful and so massive? Even a squadron as small as our Omega Squad barely takes a scratch on their armor. Ah, it is so good to be so powerful. And the Federation has been our enemy for so long, I always assumed that they'd go out with a bang, but it turns out they simply went out with a whimpering cry. Hmm, hey, I've got an idea. How about we give them one last bang? In the form of a nuclear warhead, of course. Now this isn't destroying the base, but maybe it'll destroy the power lines or something, or you know what, maybe I just wanted to do it. But of course, with the last remaining Federation base destroyed, we headed all the way back home with yet another successful mission under our belt. But unfortunately, there would be no time to rest as we still had other enemy factions to take on. This time around, we're sending Wart Wart and his heavy clone soldiers as well as his sidekick Crimson out to destroy the filthy Xenos, the Itakin, Attican, whatever they're called, the Furry Boys. However, immediately after landing, we made a shocking discovery. It turns out that these Harry Boys have nuclear weapons. Now, of course, it's not unheard of for them to have nuclear weapons, but I suppose we just weren't expecting it. The bastards immediately fired the large nuclear warhead at our ship. We grabbed it as fast as we could to try and reinstall it. We did manage to save the ship, but unfortunately, one of our clone heavy soldiers would be hit by the tail end of the blast and died. The blast also caused Crimson and some of the other soldiers to get heavy radiation poisoning, making them very slow and weak. Thankfully though, with the superior technology of Wart Wart's armor, he was not affected by this, luckily, because he could actually solo this entire base. And of course, that's exactly what he began doing. We could smell the burning furry boy flesh and hair in the air from his plasma. And it was kind of gross, actually. After destroying the immediate threat, Wart Wart entered one of the buildings, and this appeared to be where these filthy bastards were building their nuclear bombs. They had a good bit of uranium and plasteel in here. It wasn't much, especially with what we were accustomed to with raiding Void all the time, but now that they're gone, I suppose this will have to do. We began loading up what resources we could, but we were not going home just yet, as we had plenty more bases to raid. And of course, that is exactly what we began doing. We began taking on every single base head-on, 
around, encountering a few small nuclear warheads here and there, taking some uranium and plasteel. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to take any nuclear bombs intact or anything like that, but ah, we got some resources to build them. Of course, though, these nuclear bombs and the resources to build them weren't exactly on the mission docket, but it was nice having them. The main focus was destroying all of these bases. In the most notable battle in one of the Boro Forest bases, we landed damn near right inside their base and immediately began firing upon them and their turrets. Now, of course, I do say this was the most notable battle, but there still wasn't too much to really note. We spilled as much blood as we could, destroyed as much as we could, and tried to just destroy this base, essentially. And, of course, we easily succeeded at this task. However, we did lose our ship after so many battles and it sustaining so much damage, it finally finally broke. However, though, it was a pretty easy fix. We didn't build a new ship or anything like that. We had managed to make contact back with base, and Napoleon arrived with another ship to pick us up. Aw, Commander Napoleon, you're such a little sweetie. We began heading back home, and we arrived shortly thereafter with all of the resources that we had collected. Now, we didn't take too many resources. Like I mentioned, that was kind of a second thought, but we still had a good bit after it was all said and done. We had our clone army begin hauling in all the goodies, and I just kind of sat back and watched the colony for a little bit of time, thinking, of our next strategy for trying to attack these Itakin bases, however you say the word. I'm sure somebody's foaming at their mouth typing on their keyboard right now. Angry, I mispronounced it. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry. No, I'm not. Anyhow, though, some time later, Private Ox, our ODST that we saved from Void in the previous series, is, uh, well, he's up and walking around, which is a start. But it'll still be quite a while before he's ready for combat. We immediately let him equip some weapons, though, and then we begin prepping him for surgery, as we are going to begin replacing his body parts with some Void Tech body parts, and also maybe giving him a few serums. Now, this, of course, is to keep him from dying in combat, and to ensure that he can appropriately and efficiently fight off any enemies that he may encounter. But also, he's kind of our guinea pig. Ah, don't worry about it though. Look, he's fine, you know, for now. However, something that was not fine was the Void Planet Killer weapon that you guys have warned me might end up happening. Essentially, Void has activated an ancient device that will end all life on the planet, turning this planet into nothing but dust within seven days. And it appears to be about as far north as you can go before you freeze to death. And it also appears that Void has sent us some kind of strange countdown message that's very cryptic as well. But if that wasn't bad enough, we now have a massive siege of furry boys that arrive just outside our base. Looks like the Void Planet Killer weapon's going to have to wait at least a few more hours until we can destroy more of these sons of bitches. And speaking of destruction, it looks like they're already firing nuclear bombs at us. Great! You know, this kind of feels like karma for all the times that we nuke the shit out of Void. Thank God, though, these furry bastards are not near as accurate as we are, and they only managed to hit some of our turrets. And of course, Napoleon and Wart Wart immediately marched out every single soldier that we had to try and destroy the siege. And the plan was going quite well, until we ended up getting two large raids from the Itakins again, as well as the Wasters. But luckily for us, the two dumb bastards ended up coming in right next to each other and began fighting with one another. But you know, as much as I really enjoyed seeing our enemies kill one another without us even having to lift a finger, this really solidified it in my head that these factions cannot be left alive. For they can't even put their differences aside to try and take on a common enemy such as us. Truly though, now I see the truth, that if any of these factions refuse to bend the knee, then they stand in the way of the progress of the clone army, and they must be eradicated. As devious and vile as they are though, they did leave behind a few small nuclear warheads, which was perfect since we were running low on resources still. But unfortunately, since we are at war with all these other factions, it's going to be hard for us to split our army in half to protect the base and take on the Void Planet Killer, so we're going to need some help. We've decided to send out the Omega Squad leader as well as a few of its members to meet with the Empire to try and discuss a possible team-up. Besides, as it stands, we've yet to be at war with them, really, and they are allied with us since we have cleared the entire planet of Void. They still believe they have a claim on the planet, but we'll deal with that when the time comes. For the time being, Kid Omega is simply here on a diplomatic mission to speak with the Duchess about a joint military operation to save the entire planet. The Empire, of course, is literally the only other faction on the planet that might stand a chance against Void.
After discussing about the joint military operation, Kid Omega and the others began heading all the way back home, and it turns out that their mission was a total success. Turns out all it takes to bring everyone together, minus the factions that hate us, is a giant planet-destroying weapon. But now that we have an ally in this fight, it's time for us to begin our planning on the attack. Chances are, of course, this, as most missions against Void, is going to be very difficult. We, as well as our Imperial allies, immediately set our sights out on the Void Planet Killer base. And of course, we promptly began flying that way. We didn't even have the slightest clue as to what could be waiting for us there, but knowing Void, it's going to be something absolutely horrific. But as always, we would be ready for whatever came our way. And you know, honestly, from the outside, this Void base didn't look too different than any other normal Void base. You'd never really guess that this had a planet disintegrating weapon on the inside. Our two ships landed a good distance from one another, so we began gathering our troops together in one area. Shortly thereafter we landed, though the Imperials landed not too far away. And thankfully, it would appear that the Imperials have managed to amass a large size raiding party to assist us with this super weapon. I mean, hey, for a backwater planet empire, it wasn't too bad. We were fairly impressed. Sure, they're all probably going to die, but ah, we don't care. Besides, the less Imperials that survive this battle, the less that we have to conquer down the line. But as for now, they are our allies and we shall lead them charging into battle. As we all stood side by side, brothers and sisters in arms, truly an alliance like this has never been seen on this planet before. Void soldiers began launching themselves at us like lightning bolts but they hardly stood a chance against the clone and Imperial armies. However, as we predicted though, the Imperials were a bit soft and squishy, so many of them began falling down. Some of it may be due to friendly fire, but we won't talk about that. We then began moving all of the soldiers to the left side of the Void base to take out any remaining defenses just before we would begin preparing to take some rocket launchers and blow open their doors. Taylor kicked off the fun by firing two rockets at the plasteel doors and an Imperial fired a doomsday rocket launcher just after that. Unfortunately, though, the doors were a lot stronger than we anticipated. But of course, that was quite alright. That wasn't going to stop us as we had many, many charged weapons and blasters, and basically we just used those to blow open the doors. After doing so, we could see heavy defenses layered all throughout the base, and in the center of the base was the device. It was now or never. We had to make our stand and destroy this damn thing. We, as well as our Imperial allies, began flooding through the small opening that we created in the wall, taking out as many turrets and void remnants as we could. The battle was extremely chaotic. Bullets and blaster fire coming from every which way, mutants appearing in the rooms that we cracked open, it was hellish. But we continued to fight fiercely and valiantly. For the fate of the entire planet, our planet, as well as ourselves, relied on this. At one point, the Duchess was getting her ass beat by a Black Titan, but luckily he proved not to be too much of a threat, and we murdered all of the Void Remnants, and their filthy mutants as well. And together, we, the clones and the Empire, have saved the planet. And now, with all this done, there was but one thing left to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you didn't really think we were going to let them survive, did you? No, no, my dear friends. Unfortunately, the Imperials were only allies of circumstance, and circumstances have changed. Unfortunately, there is only enough room for one massive powerhouse of a faction on this planet, and it is us and our clone army. The Empire shall fall just as all other factions. Because just like all the other factions, from the Wasters to the Itakin and whoever else is on this planet, they've already proven that they cannot work together. They cannot coexist. So unfortunately for them, if they cannot live with us together in harmony, then they will have to live under our boots. But of course, we're not completely finished here. No, the device is still intact. We still have some unfinished business with this base and with this doomsday device. Business that I find is best resolved by the two small nuclear warheads we recently acquired. As it turns out, that device packs quite a punch. Immediately after exploding, the device released heavy radiation and pollution into the ocean and land nearby. Although I do suppose that's a lot better than it destroying the entire planet and killing every living being on it. 
So, as I always say, a win is a win. But even so, my dear friends, though we have finally defeated and cleansed this planet of Void, we still have a lot of work to do. All these factions must bend the knee or fall to us, and we are about to make it happen. Until next time.